I am currently living in Brisbane, Australia, and over the last few weeks, I've seen some interesting videos about Premiere Pro. The rate at which YouTubers are moving over to DaVinci Resolve. Video editors are switching from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Maybe making the switch to Resolve. I want to talk a little bit about DaVinci Resolve. I happened to have a couple ins over at Adobe, so I decided last week to make a quick flight over. What is up guys, Joshua Lefemi here in beautiful San Francisco, California. I'm at the airport and actually have a crazy cool trip planned. I'm actually on my way to Adobe headquarters. We're gonna do a few meetings and I'm going to actually interview the vice president of video audio, a good friend of mine actually, his name's Evo. We're gonna be talking about one of the big elephants in the room though that I know a lot of you guys have been talking about and asking about regarding Premiere Pro. I'll admit sometimes when I'm dealing with big companies, one of my biggest fears is that I come across as like a, a corporate shill. I feel like independence is crucial in regard to what we do here on the channel and I never want to be lockstep within a specific corporate mantra of any specific company. The real cool thing about Adobe is we've been working with them on and off for like the last two and a half years and they've been always extremely open to us just criticizing and giving straight feedback and that has a lot to do with why we're here actually. Regardless of all that guys I can't help being excited to being able to visit the headquarters of one of the companies that have literally shaped my professional career for the last 10 years you got to give credit where credit is due what these guys have done over there has been world changing for so many of us i met my brother evo years ago on linkedin even before we started working kind of professionally with adobe as a youtube channel he just always seemed like a really genuine guy and i've always just had a ton of respect for him he was basically my main in how i was able to get into the corporate headquarters which i'm just kind of realizing is further away from the san francisco airport than i initially thought the first few minutes of our conversation we just literally just caught up on life because believe it or not, this was actually our first time ever meeting each other in person. Evo told me about how he grew up in Bulgaria, then he moved to the States and worked for Microsoft, then Facebook, and now he's working with Adobe with the incredible position of Vice President of the Digital Video and Audio Division. We develop all the products for video editing, audio editing, character animation and motion graphics design, as well as the supporting services. As he was talking, I was literally trying to focus because I just couldn't believe that I was actually there at Adobe headquarters. But I wasn't going to let that cloud my next question, a very important question that even I knew he understood needed to be answered. So Evo, I know you've been hearing the elephant in the room. People are always talking about Premiere having crashing issues. You have people that love Premiere that have been using Premiere for years and years like myself and don't really want to change. We're set in our ways, but we, we are dealing with this persistent issue. Is this something you've heard? What has been your response? to this specifically? Josh, we appreciate all the feedback, first of all, and thank you for bringing this up. We have heard the issue loud and clear. Actually, our extent, so the topic just beyond beyond crashing, there's, there's the topic of quality. Quality encompasses uh, stability of the product, quality encompasses performance, quality encompasses UI latency. It's a, it's a complicated topic that we are treating as top priority and have been treating as top priority for the past two or three years now. I'm sure you've seen the multiple improvements that we are making in the product. We are constantly investing in that. This is the most important feature. Quality, I like to say, is the most important feature in the product. It's foundational. No other feature matters unless you can depend on our product because it is the workforce of the industry. So we are on it. You have my commitment. We are fixing this. We are improving release after release after release. And as a matter of fact, the last six or seven releases of the product, every single one of them has been the most stable release for the history of the product uh, based on our telemetry. We went on talking about this for a little while, and I'll admit, at the end of this conversation, it really made me feel better. I could hear just how personal he took this. He really took to heart a lot of these comments, and that his team were really, really focused on getting this figured out. I've definitely experienced crashing in Premiere. Crazy experiences that I could tell you, that a lot of people could tell you. But I think that right now, and you can confirm if this is the case, the issue may be more a perception of crashing more than actual the crashing issue being as bad as it was in the past. Now we could definitely just blame Adobe and just say this is a bed that it made for itself because it basically did. They had a bad issue with crashing for literally forever. They then significantly improved say over the last 24 months and yet they have to just continue to battle the perception of having software that constantly crashes. Now by no means am I saying that all the issues have been fixed. I don't think that anyone even Adobe would say that. These issues mainly being in the realm of reliability or stability 
performance, and then cost. Because the Creative Cloud is kind of expensive. But a rather interesting, I'll say minor fact that I discovered was just how many of these issues that were actually a result of user error. It's actually funny, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this. It actually took me literally flying from Brisbane to San Francisco after complaining for an entire month on Instagram about how much I hate Premiere Pro because it just kept freezing up to realize that it actually all stemmed from the fact that I hadn't updated my driver for my graphics card in over a year. My driver on my laptop had gone through a ridiculous number of releases since I had updated it last. Other issues that people may have is that they do not consistently keep up with software updates in the Creative Cloud. I want to reiterate a second time that even Adobe would admit that user-based error is not the entire issue. I'm just saying that the percentage is a little bit higher than I understood previously. Adobe's competition, specifically the people at DaVinci Resolve and a couple other contenders, are very real and they're very formidable opponents. The people that I saw behind the scenes at Adobe, however, are committed and they seemed remarkably confident. I really liked the fact that it seemed like they were listening. And to be honest, this one trip has gotten me way more excited about the future of Adobe than I ever have been in the past. It's gonna be so crucial though, for all of us users to keep that fire underneath their butts. And I know you guys will. On a little bit of a lighter note, I'll say that Mogarts, media replacement Mogarts have changed the life of my team. As far as our revenue flows, as far as our YouTube channel, we make digital products. Originally, when I saw Mogarts come into the scene, I was so excited, but they were so just, they, they didn't play through, they were really laggy. And I was like, dang, this is such a crazy opportunity that's just kind of going on by the wayside. I think a couple updates ago, a couple months ago, Mogarts got updated so that they run two times faster in Premiere. Changed the life of our company, literally. We just created this product called the ePrism. It's basically like a digital version of a lens distortion filter. Bro, so many of them have sold and it relies specifically on having the Mogarts being able to run fast in this new update in Premiere. The pack would have been worthless without this new update. Shameless plug available in the description below. Thank you. <laughs> I accept uh, the thanks on behalf of the team. And yeah, we've made, I'm, I'm happy to report that we've made some pretty significant improvements in performance. Uh, optimizing for specific uh, hardware, optimizing internal pipelines, um, both in terms of raw performance, which is what you're experiencing, as well as latency, UI latency in the product. Obviously, when you interact with the product, you want immediacy. Guys, we can't talk about it here, but the things that are coming in the near future and in the far future in After Effects and Premiere is incredible. We talked about a lot of it today. We're not gonna be able to say nothing, but it got me really, really excited. Would I be able to tell you my five potentially dumb dream features that I would like to be implemented in Premiere Pro, let's say over the next 12 months? A lot of you guys watching probably have your own group of dream features that may be structured to your workflow, but these are mine, so don't laugh at me. Yeah, Josh, look, we are here to serve your needs. So yeah, let's get them. Okay, all right, here we go. So I have five. I have a video coming out soon that's going to be 50 that you'll see on the channel. But number one, stability. We already talked about this. A stable foundation is necessary before we even think about all the other awesome, cool features that are going to be implemented, like you said already. Number two, background saving, I thought would be really cool. I wouldn't have to always worry about doing control S or command S if you're on a Mac to save. Stuff would just be continuously saving on the background. As far as autosave goes, I have the number of saves being 200 and then it's saving every one minute. I always thought it would be cool if the master file could be updated with the latest autosave. For number three, I think I'd really love to see more more codecs being accepted in the, the whole Premiere interface. I remember back in the day when I switched from Final Cut 7 to Premiere, that was like Premiere owned it on the codex thing and maybe they still are the best as far as um, the number of codecs that they support. I know the capabilities there, like they've, they've already, Premiere has already proved themselves over and over again. But there's some like newer codecs that are coming in, like like MKV, maybe I'm saying that wrong, that, that I've like come across that I'm like, Okay, it'd be nice for a little bit of support there. Number four, I work with adjustment layers a lot when I'm like making tutorials. A lot of you guys know that adjustment layers, basically you put an effect on an adjustment layer and it affects any of the clips below that adjustment layer. I've come into these like weird situations where I'm like, dang, it'd be cool if I could like target specific layers underneath the adjustment layer for that effect on that adjustment layer to actually affect, as opposed to it just affecting all the layers underneath. Number five, 
I call it AI auto color. I don't use Premiere as far as color correction goes. There are competing people in the market that are killing it as far as color correction goes. I always knew that Premiere would have to have a formidable response to that. But one idea that I've always been like, dang, this would be an incredible leapfrog as far as any competition in the color space is if somehow Adobe was able to take advantage of this crazy cool AI wave and development to literally create some genius, extraordinary, unprecedented auto color correction and maybe auto color grading thing where it's like one click and you get a professional color grade. Obviously it's asking for a lot. If it was possible, it would have happened already. But I'm like, dang, that would change, that would turn everyone's heads if that was even possible. Before that, we do have match color in Premiere that I, I think could be improved significantly. So Josh, you're right, there's, there's both When we talk about stability, there's both perception and reality. On the perception side, we see the perception. We see the perception that the product is unstable, the product is crashing. Some of that is based on experiences with old versions of the product. We still have a large portion of our users who don't upgrade, who stay on old versions. And we always, of course, suggest get to the best, uh, to the latest version. It's the most stable version. Uh, some of this is, uh, however, objective reality. We see it in our analytics and I want to be very accountable for it. Uh, we see crashes in our analytics, we see the struggles that some of our users uh, have and it pains us and it's something that we are focusing on addressing because we know that every crash is uh, affecting somebody, it's disrupting their work, it's uh, uh, you know creating kind of getting them out of the creative zone so we have a responsibility of delivering the most stable the most dependable as i said this is foundational to us we're investing in various different features in addition to core stability of the product in order to enable all of our users to be knowledgeable of what's happening on their system uh, one such uh, investment for example is uh, plugin managers we are looking at creating plugin managers similar to what uh, google chrome has Uh, that um, allow you to see what your plugins are doing, you know, because we have well-behaved plugins. We also have, you know, plugins that sometimes, you know, cause performance issues, stability issues, and so on. So we want to expose that to you as a user uh, so that you can make informed decisions. So this is coming soon. We are currently in the process of, you know, designing the features and figuring out how we bring to public beta and would love to hear your feedback and engage you very early on that as well as all of your um, all the people watching it. Um, the second one, uh, background saving, you'll be delighted to know that this is now available in public beta as of, I think, two or three days ago, uh, unless I'm wrong. So, wow, okay. yes, so go ahead, uh, check, uh, check it out. Obviously, we are using the public beta channel to uh, solicit feedback from all of our early users of the feature. Uh, integrate that feedback, perfect the feature, and they will get it to production. So we'd love to get you on the public beta so that you can, um, you know, tell us what you feel about the feature. Uh, and of course, when we talk about autosave, uh, a major uh, investment is performance. It has to be seamless. It has to not disrupt your work. And uh, you should always have the confidence the right things are happening. You know, even if you shut off the power of the machine, you still have all your work there without being disrupted. Um, the third one that you mentioned, more colleagues. So we have a history of very broad codec support and we have a commitment to support the broadest set of codecs by any product uh, now we do have some gaps i want to recognize that it's a bit of a um, prioritization as you can imagine and sequencing issues so please tell us tell us what are the codecs that you need Uh, we have a, a large team here investing in building codec support, improving codec support in every release. Uh, and of course, we'll adjust our roadmaps to, uh, to accommodate your needs. It's funny that you mentioned color because uh, we, color is an area of investment for us. Uh, as you know, we introduced uh, HDR support uh, maybe a year ago and have been working on improving our overall uh, color pipeline, uh, exposing a set of uh, features. And yeah, you're right. Uh, there's a lot of great products out there that people use for color grading. We celebrate them all. We appreciate the fact that we participate in a workflow that uh, is supported by different products. It's not just us. Uh, and completely agree with you. Uh, the, the, and that's actually a discussion that we're having within the team is how do we provide 
valuable capabilities to uh, the end user um, that use the advances of 2023 all the artificial intelligence, all the machine learning advances that we have and we can apply to the space without uh, deprivating you from um, uh, full, uh, full control and full uh, malleability of the output. So uh, stay tuned, we are working on this and we'll be bringing uh, new functionality and new capabilities to the product very, very soon. You're spot on, this is something that uh, we are investing in. Last thing freaking speech enhancement. This is something that I feel like came out of nowhere in our world. I did not, I'm not an audio person, but I always just assumed once you have bad audio baked together, there's little you can do to fix it. You can fix video to a certain extent, this, that, but audio is just a lost cause. I, not only me, everyone that I talked to was completely just flabbergasted with the speech enhancement thing where I did a video where I was like talking on my iPhone mic and it felt like I was talking into like a professional road mic that was like two inches from my mouth. Everyone already knows what I'm talking about. It's currently in a browser. Is it ever going to be implemented right inside of Premiere? Yeah. Um, so thank you for, uh, for mentioning this. This is a feature that we are very proud of. And as you said, it's uh, currently available as, our, as part of our podcast uh, beta. We have a product, uh, podcastadobe.com, uh, which uh, exposes the feature as well as other podcasting functionality. Um, we love the feedback. We've heard it loud and clear. People want this feature in the professional products. And so we are bringing the feature into the professional products. The browser obviously presents ways for us to, yeah, to test the models, to perfect the models. Uh, in a very sort of a fast, um, uh, with a very fast turnaround cycle. Uh, but yeah, now that we've uh, proven the viability and obviously the, given the response that we are getting, we're definitely bringing this into the, into the prop products with the right provisions, obviously, for the professional use. The people over at Adobe are crazy, ingeniously smart human beings. And they are just that, human beings. They have seen our feedback, and now it's gonna be up to them to implement the solutions, and I'm confident that they'll be able to. But the question still remains, am I gonna be switching over to DaVinci Resolve? I may be going against the grain with this answer, but I really don't want to. I do currently use DaVinci Resolve for all of my professional color correction and color grading projects, but I'm not really a big fan of node-based video editing and especially VFX. I've done 10 years in Premiere and I'd love to do my next 10 years in Premiere. I can't speak for this new generation coming up that does not have my same 10 year bias in Premiere, but I do know now that Adobe is listening and that the quality of their product is gonna reflect this new competition. I'm still taking in the fact that I'm at the Adobe headquarters. A lot of us users could only dream of being in a place like this. This place has shaped our lives and careers literally for me for the last 10 years, for a lot of people even longer. Really appreciate you allowing me to set this up. I love the fact that Adobe loves competition and the innovativeness that this is spurring that has been spur that it's been spurring for a while is very evident. I'm excited about the future and I'm just waiting in, in anticipation.